My reviews are only a minute each. That's all the time I need to teach. You'll learn about this series up and down. Welcome to the One Minute Rundown. I'm O.C. Trinity, your host, and this time, like this game's main villain, I'm speaking in rhyme. This time, we're running down Banjo-Kazooie, a series that was popular then supposedly went kablooey. It's silly and goofy with a cartoonish vibe, a weird British thing that I'll try to describe. See, on the N64 they were a shining star, but the fanbase says from there they went too far. The earlier games built off Mario 64, transforming, platforming, and lots to explore. Each level with jiggies, notes, and abilities to learn, all for the sake of a witch that needs to burn. But then, so they say, they tried something new, and in doing so changed the series' genre, too. I mean, sure, he's no stranger to kart racing games, but these days people expect some things to stay the same. The last game focused on customizing vehicles, and creative as it was, it... Um... Nothing rhymes with vehicles, does it? Okay, I'm not gonna be able to keep this rhyming thing up. Anyway, though, I got six games to review this episode. Let's see how this one held up, shall we? This is a collect-a-thon platforming game, and to say Mario 64 inspired it is a bit of an understatement. That said, though, it also shows you can get away with ripping off another game if you do it well enough. The game flow is pretty much the same. You'll go to the hub world from one of several action worlds where the main objective is to collect items. There are two main collectibles, Jiggies, which are harder to find but directly unlock new levels, and Musical Notes, which are scattered everywhere and unlock new areas of the hub world. Now, I know you're probably thinking, this sounds a lot like other collect-a-thon platformers, right? Well, one key difference is that you'll be learning new abilities as you go. And another is that periodically Banjo and Kazooie will enlist the help of the witch doctor Mumbo Jumbo to transform into something else with different abilities. But where this game really excels is the level design. While there is inevitably going to be a few levels you probably won't like simply because they're difficult, it's pretty hard to deny that all the levels are well thought out and varied, and the hub world is probably one of the best in the genre, with lots of hidden areas and secrets to find. In short, it's one of the quintessential 3D platforming games of its time, and well worth the look. This game feels like it expands on the first game in almost every way possible. Banjo-Kazooie have twice as many moves, and that's because they carried over every ability from the last game while learning about the same number. One of the more marketed abilities you get allows Banjo and Kazooie to split up at certain points, though that is but too situational to make as much impact as it sounds. Along the same lines, Mumbo Jumbo is playable now, with new character Humba Wumba inheriting his old rule, but his primary purpose is to activate a magic spell or two in each world, and you won't use him for much else. Levels are about twice as big, frequently including their exits directly to other levels instead of just to the hub world. Not too surprisingly, this means Jiggies and other collectibles are also harder to get, and a sizable number of them require doing something in two different levels, pretty much guaranteeing you won't get everything in one go. The game's similar enough to its predecessor that if you liked one game, you'll probably like the other, though I prefer the first primarily because a few too many items in this break down into mini-games. But aside from that, whether or not you like this game over the first will probably depend on how complex and long you like your missions. Know about demakes? Those games that take a modern game and look at how it might work on an older system? Well, this is pretty much what Banjo-Kazooie would have been like if it was made in 1993. It's a top-down platform, but still keeps the emphasis on collecting items that are needed to progress into new levels. Surprisingly, pretty much all of the concepts made it into this game, but on the other hand, it introduces almost nothing new either. The only real change is that Mumbo's transformations aren't level-specific anymore. Even Banjo's ability set is pretty much a scaled-down version of what he had in the first two games. Levels are a bit on the small side, and the first few levels feel like they're not really trying all that hard. I guess they could use the fact that Kazooie isn't around for story-related reasons as an excuse, but really, they gotta try harder than that. Also, a game heavy on exploration would probably work better if the more of the world was on screen. Like, if the camera panned back around 20%, it would be a little easier to see what's around you. I know I tossed around the nothing new phrase a lot in the last episode, but this takes the cake over that by a lot. Interesting story behind this one. It started as a direct sequel to Diddy Kong Racing, and the engine was rendered completely in 3D. Unfortunately, Rare got bought out during development, losing the rights to Diddy Kong, and the Game Boy Advance wasn't powerful enough to support what the dev team had in mind, but rather than saying it wasn't meant to be, they retold it into this, and what we got could be a textbook example of a compromised and salvaged product. It's a very generic kart racing game, except using planes instead of carts, and if you're using planes, then, well, shouldn't your height actually matter? The tracks are completely flat and surrounded by invisible walls. 
And the items, well, it's the same type of items we get in other kart racers, without much of innovation. Granted, they at least try to get some variety with the game modes. You're able to race all 16 tracks going forward or reverse. Each circuit ends with a duel against the champion. You've got the Jiggy Challenge, almost identical to Diddy Kong Racing Silver Coin Challenges. But these extra modes don't help if it's not fun to play in the first place. I'm guessing this is the one game on this episode you didn't know existed. And that's perfectly fine, because you can rest easy not playing it. Since I brought up Diddy Kong Racing a few times, let's talk about that too. After all, it is Banjo's first game. If Banjo-Kazooie was Rare's attempt to copy Mario 64, this was their shot at Mario Kart. There's one distinguishing feature about this game that sets it aside, and that's the ability to see exactly what items you're gonna get. The item balloons are color-coded, and collecting multiples of the same color powers up your current item. A few items do seem weak compared to others, and a few power-up chains that feel like they're in the wrong order, but planning your item collecting is a welcome strategy. And of course, you're picking cars, planes, or hovercraft depending on the track, all of which handle differently, and you can usually pick which one you want to use in multiplayer mode. Surprisingly, the one-player adventure mode is another big selling point, which in the spirit of this whole series, contains a hub world from which you grab collectibles and need a minimum number of them to access each race. It does get a little repetitive, since if you're going for 100%, it means you'll be racing each track a minimum of three times, only one of which will actually make things any different by scattering coins across it, but manages to mix things up enough to be interesting. Track design's usually pretty good, but admittedly not great either. Overall, though, kart racing fans will enjoy this game, even if it's not the best of its type. Discard everything you know about Banjo-Kazooie for a second, let me tell you how this one works. You'll go into one of the levels and find another character who will give you some kind of mission and your win-loss criteria. From there, you'll choose a vehicle, one you can tweak as much as you want or even build from scratch with a LEGO-like creation system to help you with your mission. We could range anywhere from races, combat, deliveries, escort missions, twisted versions of actual sports, any other stuff you might not believe had I not included it in this video. Admittedly, the concept works in part because the characters are aware of how silly it is, and if you go into this expecting a game anything like the rest of the series, you will hate this one. But really, this is one of the best examples of game-rewarding creativity that I can think of, where you're limited more by your imagination than the game mechanics, one that really is one of the most intelligent games I've played. I mean, I tried thinking of some vehicles that actually existed but couldn't be done in this game and it came up with a surprisingly short list, and several challenges are so open-ended that there are multiple correct answers. Have fun comparing how you did something with your friends. If you can get past how unlike the rest of the series this is, it's well worth a look. That's it for Banjo-Kazooie. There's one more game Banjo makes a playable appearance in, and that's the Xbox 360 version of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Perhaps we'll cover that in a later episode. Unfortunately, Banjo-Kazooie looks like it's taking a rest for now. Despite my praise for Nuts and Bolts, it wasn't all that well-received financially, and Rare's been working mostly on Kinect games ever since. I'd be very surprised if they left this alone forever, though, as it's one of their most successful original IPs, and there's an interview somewhere saying one of the developers had some ideas kicking around for another game. But for now, just enjoy the games we do have. If you're interested in playing these, the original game, Tui, and Nuts and Bolts are all downloadable on the Xbox 360, and Diddy Kong Racing got a remake on the DS as well, though with Rare's changing hands, Banjo's not in it anymore. The GBA games, well, if you can find them, they're probably going to be pretty cheap at least. And check back in two weeks for the next episode of One Minute Rundown. Like this series, it's one that everyone's raging about how the newest game won't look and feel much like the originals, and the fan base is already vocal about this one despite the game not being out yet. See you then, and remember, no one expects the Jinjo. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. We can't do anything Banjo-Kazooie related without a quiz at the end. So, here's your question. This is the fifth episode of One Minute Rundown. So, up to and including this episode, how many games did I give an F rating? Here are your choices. Click on the right answer for a special treat.